Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to make a to-do list app with React. I figured that this was a really easy beginner project to do if you're just starting out and it's a fun one to do as well. I'm gonna first show you what the app looks like and how to use it and then we can start creating it. With that being said, let's begin. All right, so this is the app and it just says to-do list at the top and it has an input field where you can type in your to-do and a button to add that to-do. So for example, I'll type in read a book as a to-do and when I hit add, it will clear the input box and display the to-do below. I can add another one that says go to the gym and when I hit add, you can see that it also adds this to-do right here. Now if I want to remove a to-do, then I can just click the X button next to it and if I click it, you can see that it removes that specific to-do from the list of to-dos. If I want to remove this one as well, I'll just click this X button and it's going to be removed. So now that you've seen how this app works, let's start building it. So first you need to open your terminal and type in npx create hyphen react hyphen app and then the name of your react app. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to call mine react hyphen to do's and I'll hit enter and it's going to start creating my react app. Now this process will take a while, so I'll speed up the video. Okay, so now that our React project has been created, I'm going to cd into the React to-dos directory by doing cd react to-dos. And I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code inside of this directory by doing code and dot. Okay. So here you can see that Visual Studio Code has opened up inside of this directory. And now that we've gotten our project set up, let's actually, we're, we're going to first start off by removing the unnecessary files and then we're going to start writing the code for it. Alright, so the files that we're not going to be needing are app.test.js and logo.svg. So I'll go ahead and remove them. And next I'm going to go into my app.js file and remove everything and replace it with a function component by doing rfce. And RFCE is a shortcut you can use to create a function component with the ES7 snippets extension. So next I'm going to import uh, use state along with React and you'll understand why we're going to need this in a while. And if you don't know about use state, I'd recommend checking my video on it, which I'll link in the top right corner, okay? So once I've imported use state, I'm going to create two state variables and one, is, one of them is going to be an array that will store the to-dos and the other will keep track of what the to-do is or what we enter into the input box, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna do const list, set list, and this will be equal to an empty uh, use state array, okay? And then the next variable is gonna be const input, and this is what we type into the input box. So set input, and by default, this is going to be equal to nothing, it's just going to be an empty string. Okay, so now we can work on the actual web page. And for the actual web page, um, I'm going to create a div here. And I'm going to create a header tag. And inside this header tag, the header is just going to be to do list, which is the same thing that you saw in the demonstration, which I showed earlier on in the video. Okay, so now that we've gotten the header tag, I'm going to create the input box. So for the input box, I'm going to do input, and then type is going to be course text the value is going to be input and on change I'm gonna set input to e dot target value and then close this input tag so the this right here value is equal to input basically means that the code is going to bind whatever the input variable is with this input field and this on change event handler will listen for any characters that are typed in and will set the value of the input state variable, which is this right here, to those characters. So for example, if I were to type in read a book, the value of the input state variable would be read a book, okay? So now that we've gotten the input field, I'm going to create the add button. So to create the add button, I'm just gonna create a button tag and this will just have add, okay? 
So now that we have this much done, uh, we can run our app to see what it looks like. So I'll open up my terminal and I'm gonna do npm start and I'm gonna give it a few seconds to start up. So go to my browser right here. And here you can see that we have our header which says to-do list, our input box, and a button that we can use to add to-dos. So now that we've gotten this much done, we can move on to actually adding the to-dos and storing them into our list state variable. All right, so to add the function to actually add to-dos, we're gonna go into our code and I'm going to write down the code to add the to-dos and I'll explain what it means. So I'll start now. So const add to-do, we'll take in a to-do and then create a new to-do I'll have an ID of math.random and the to-do is going to be equal to the to-do that was passed in. Okay. And next, uh, add the to-do to the list. So to do this, we can just do set list, list and then new to-do, and then clear input box. So to clear the input box, we can just do set input to an empty string. Okay, so this is the function for adding to-dos. So it's going to first take in a to-do right here, and then it's going to create a variable called new to-do, and this will be a JSON object. And this new to-do will have an ID, which is used to identify the to-do, and you'll understand more as to why we need this ID in a bit. And this ID is just a random number, and then we're going to have the actual to-do, which is going to be the to-do that is passed in to this add to-do function. Okay, next we need to add this new to do to this list array right here. So, to do that, we use set list, and this will basically append this new to do to the existing elements in this list, which is why we have these uh, three dots right here to indicate those existing elements. Okay, and once we've added the new to do to the list, we're going to want to clear the input box so that we so that the user knows that the to-do has been added and if they need to add another one, it's already been cleared for them. So to clear the input box, we can just do set input to an empty string, okay? So now that I've went over this, we're gonna want to trigger this add to-do function somehow. So to do that, we can add an onclick listener to our button right here. So to add the onclick listener, we can just do on click. So call an arrow function, which will trigger that function. So add to do and then pass in the input, which is the to do. Okay. So just to go over this again, this on click um, event listener will listen for any click events happening on our button. And for every click event, it will call this add to do function and will pass in the input, which is what we enter into the input box as the to do. So now let's try this out. So I'm going to go back to our web page and I'll just enter get groceries and if I click add it should clear this input box which will indicate that the to do has been added to the list array so I'll click add and here you can see that it clears this input field meaning that the to do has been added so now that I've showed you how to add to do's I'm going to show you how to display them and also how to delete them all right, so to display the to-dos, I'm going to go back into my code and right here below the button tag, I'm going to write some code and I'll explain to you what it means once I'm done. Okay, so what we're doing here is basically taking all of the to-dos that are in this list array and mapping them. So first we have this unordered list which we create using um, this UL tag right here. And then we map each to-do to a list item tag which is this li tag right here. And when we use this map function, each item needs a key. And earlier I told you that we'd be using this ID right here and 
here the ID is a key, okay, for each list item. Then we have to display the actual to do, which we do by doing to do dot to do. And we're doing this because the to do that's mapped is the object, and this object has a property called to do, which is the actual to do. And I hope all that makes sense, okay? And last but not least, we have this button tag that has ampersand times and a semicolon. And if you're wondering what this is, it's the X button that um, websites usually have when you want to remove an item. So if we want to delete a to do, we'd be using this button. And I'm going to show you in a bit um, what this looks like, and you'll see uh, how this looks. So now that we have this much done, I'm going to go back to our web page and for example I'm just going to enter in cook dinner as a to do and once I hit add you can see that the to do is being displayed right here and next to it you can see the X button which is going to be used to delete um, this to do and we're going to be adding functionality to that later so this X right here is what this entity is doing right here okay and again I'm going to type in another to-do. Um, so this time I'll do clean room. And when I hit add, you can see that clean room has been added as a to-do. Okay. So now that we've not only added the function to add to-dos and display them, we can begin working on the function to delete a to-do. Okay. So to delete to-dos, I'm going to go back into our code and I'm going to create a function to delete to-dos. I'm going to first write down the code and I'll explain to you what it means. Okay, so this is the code to delete or remove a to do from this list array. So it's going to first take in an ID, which is going to be the ID of the to do that we want to remove. And then it will create a variable called new list, which will contain all the to do's aside from the one we want to remove. So this list dot filter will check each to do. And if the to do's ID is not equal to the ID of the to do that we want to remove, it'll add that to do to um, this new list, excluding the to do that we want to remove. And I hope what I just said made sense. And then finally, we want to set the value of this list state variable to this new list by doing set list new list and new list will now be equal to the um, list without the to do uh, that we want to remove. Okay, so now we need to actually trigger this function and to do that we need to add an on click event on this delete button right here. So I'll go to this button right here. And here I'm going to do on click and I'm going to call this delete to do function and I'm going to pass in the to do dot ID as the argument for this ID parameter. So I've saved my code and if we go back to our web page to test it, let's enter in another to do first. So I'll enter in test to do app as one of my to do's and when I hit add you can see that it's been added. Okay. So now I'm going to click this delete button and you can see that the to do um, is deleted. So I'll click this, I'll click this and you can see that our to do's are being removed as they should be. And I'm going to enter in another to do. So here I'll just say go to the gym. And when I hit add, you can see that it's um, adding this to do to the list array and also displaying it. And if I click this X button right here, the delete button, it's going to remove this to do. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this entire app. We've implemented this UI here where we can enter into dos and remove them, which is the whole objective of this video. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. Also, I would like to say a massive thank you for helping this channel grow to have over a thousand subscribers, which is an amazing milestone and a large one as well. And I'd also like to apologize for the lack of uploads recently, um, but I've been busy with school and I haven't really gotten time to record, so I do apologize for that. But other than that, thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. I hope you found this video to be informative and I hope you learned something. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.